between my eyes Walked through the park, came out better on the other side See life's like a peach if you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, This is part of the Prosper Show e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. They have an amazing conference with some of the top Amazon sellers and industry leaders like we have with Mark today. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. Today, I'm very excited. We have Mark Doust. He's founder of Quiet Light Brokerage. He founded it back in 2007, and they help entrepreneurs with an online business sell their website for maximum value, which I'm sure every entrepreneur wants in the end. And he started Quiet Light after selling an online publication they built to over 220,000 subscribers. Mark, I was watching a video today of you, I think it was in, I don't know, 2000 six or 2005 giving an industry leader conference you're speaking and uh, since you know you've helped thousands of entrepreneurs sell their business and the most impressive stat about mark is he has six kids that is crazy mark so (laughs) thanks for joining me so mark i want to talk about valuation for a second i figured we could talk about one of the it is a case study because you have obviously people can go on your site and they can go on quiet light brokerage and they can go to listings they can see whatever uh, it was listed there. Um, and so I pulled up a few e-commerce ones. Um, so I figured instead of just talking, you know, like you said, it just depends on valuation. Um, and I know you can't disclose uh, specific numbers and things because there's non disclosures, but there's an e-commerce business here on the site. And maybe it's not going to be there much longer. Um, someone's going to buy it, but 10 hour weekly workload. Um, and it's The description is as launched in late 2014, this 95% Amazon jewelry fitness brand is operated in less than 10 hours per week. It's grown over 340% in the last 12 months. Um, All these things sound like, uh, you know, a seller is just, or a buyer is um, lighting up inside with with those, uh, with that sentence. So talk about how, you know, how maybe just in general how it's come to the valuation looks like the multiple is 2.13 like how do you come to the multiple and the valuation of some some business like this sure so uh coming up with the valuation uh is always a bit of a mix of what is the market willing to bear um and then also um what is that what are the owner's requirements or expectations or goals uh, as I just said, some, it doesn't always make sense financially for somebody to sell. So you have to ask, well, uh, what are your other goals right. in selling? Quick sale or... Right, 10 hours a week, it's growing 340%. Like, right. Wh- why sell it? Yeah. Right, right. And I, I don't know specifically what the reason is for this person selling. I'm actually looking to see if I can find it real real quick. Uh, so they're, they're saying uh, time constraints um, with uh, other activities that they have. Do they have seven um, kids or something? Or? No, I'm just <laughs> um, possibly who knows uh, there is something in there about a baby so uh, possibly um, uh, but uh, as far as coming up with the valuation for a business like this uh, it will be a mixture uh, of that now 2.13 multiple uh, means that there's going to be something that that we are also looking at and probably saying there's some things that a buyer needs to account for with this business maybe it's defensibility of the product line maybe there's there's something else that we're seeing maybe it's just young uh, which is very much the case, and I think that's actually the case with this one. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, that it's just as uh, if it was older and maybe more unique, then it would warrant like a three times or, or a exactly. Bigger multiple. Yep, and I'm looking at this one right here, launched late in 2014. So uh, that's definitely uh, going to be a, a discount. We recommend people wait at least three years before selling. There's a discount under three years, and even if you're like at 36 months, you're not going to get the best multiple you can possibly get. Mm. Um, so anyways, for valuations, it's going to be a mixture of both what's the market g- going to bear uh, and then also what are your expectations. If this owner is really just, hey, I got to get rid of this business. I love it, but I just can't do it and I want to sell it before uh, it kills me and then I lose all value, then we're going to recommend a lower price. 
Um, it always has to be within what we think for market expectations reasonably within or close to market expectations in order for us to sell it. So I won't be putting up a 10 times multiple or anything like that unless we, unless, unless it really justified, but I can't imagine that. What type of businesses have the biggest multiples? SaaS tends to have the biggest multiples SaaS. at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, SaaS content sites, re recurring subscription revenue um, tends to have the, the highest multiples. Mm -hmm. So for something like this, you figure out, I mean, obviously the, the nuances about why they're selling and, and all the, the background, but then you obviously the, the hard numbers, you have the income, which in this case, in the revenue, which is 411,000, the income is 126. And then it's a multiple off of the income of 2.13 times for this particular business. That's right. And so I've, I've got a love hate relationship with multiples, more of a hate relationship than a love relationship with them. Um, they're, they're very static statistic, uh, which I, I, I have troubles with all the time. Um, I would just encourage people don't get hung up on the multiples. They, they don't tell you much at all. Um, they just tell you what the last 12 months were. They tell you nothing about the direction uh, of that, um, uh, of what that income is. And no businesses, well, I won't say no business. Most businesses don't stay flat at, from year after year. They're growing or they're shrinking. And you don't get that, that idea from the multiple alone. But yeah, for, for this one, we, we always do base it off the last 12 months, but a lot goes into um, that multiple itself. So for this particular business, um, whatever you can share, what would you say someone can do what are the potential areas like so a buyer is looking at it like okay it's a 2.13 obviously they want to recoup their money as fast as possible where do you see the potential areas for the, for a buyer for this business yeah for this business it, i mean it's so young um that it's still in its initial growth curve so uh, with a business like this there isn't actually a lot to do initially to be able to recoup your money faster especially at the low multiple that it's at um, you have to support it and you have to, as a buyer, do your upfront research to make sure that it's going to continue growing and not tank after you buy it. And obviously, we wouldn't sell it if we think it's going to do that. But um, buyers need to do that research independently to see if, if uh, they agree with us on that. Uh, other than that, you know, just looking at this, they've added a lot of uh, SKUs within just the past few months. Uh, and um, those are just starting to uh, to hit. And with young companies like this, oftentimes, especially e-commerce, that's what it comes down to is starting to build up that inventory and that, that product offering and it naturally will grow the business on its own. Mm -hmm. Anything else that a untrained eye wouldn't see like a trained eye like yourself sees with this type of listing. Uh, if I knew it better, I could probably uh, give better, uh, better, better advice, but I don't know this listing yeah. uh, terribly well. It just says he's identified and opened many paths to growth that require minimal working capital. Um, yeah, so it does say the reasons for the sale are time constraints with a full-time job and a nine-month-old baby. So this person's operating this with a full-time job, it seems. Right, right. And I think for a lot of people, they don't want to leave the security of that uh, uh, full-time job. Um, they start these things, especially with Amazon businesses. This happens a lot where you start something on the side thinking it's going to be side income. And if you do well on Amazon, and I'm sure people that are going to Prosper Shore are familiar with this, Sometimes the growth from Amazon is, is aggressive to the point of being almost uh, difficult to keep up with. Uh, it happens to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, well, I think the majority of e-commerce sellers on Amazon started with an e-commerce business. And they thought, I'm going to add Amazon as a side channel. Right. And the next thing you know, Amazon is their main channel uh, right. of revenue. Yeah. So. Um, and then what about, there's another one, the nutritional supplement business, worldwide growth structure in place. This is a three-year-old nutritional supplement business, has a worldwide network in place ready for substantial growth. It started in 2013. Um, this company had amazing results until a partnership went bad. Uh, without any direction or attention, there has been a serious drop in sales. Um, this one has, says revenue at 156, and then the income was 107, and it has a, a lower multiple of 1.85. Right, and that would be because of the, the decline. Um, declines are obviously a major, major uh, drawback on any business. Um, uh, we always recommend people try and course correct if they can. Uh, but if they can't, if, they, if it's not within their capacity either mentally or otherwise, uh, yep. maybe they need some outside resources, then you sell and you sell quickly. Before you get out ahead of your valuation because it, it tanks very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that would be the main driver for a low multiple on this. Um, I would imagine one of the 
most frequent questions you get, maybe not, you could tell me is um, the financing piece uh, yes. from a buyer. Um, how do how is that usually handled? You know, uh, someone well, does have a briefcase full of two hundred thousand dollars cash, like laying under their bed or something. Sure. Well, I, I mean, we do actually have a number of cash buyers. Cash is obviously the preferred way cash to go. Cash is king. Yeah. <laughs> cash is king always. And if if anyone is wondering why, it's much easier to negotiate with somebody who can pay right away than waiting for a bank who you have no control over. Um, SBA financing would be the number two um, source of financing. Mm-hmm. About half of our deals are done through SBA financing. Um, and then outside of that, it, it's usually a mix. Does uh, a business uh, have to be of a certain age to qualify for that, or how does that work? It has to be three years uh, old, have three tax returns on file. And it's mm-hmm. got to be U.S.-based uh, mm-hmm. in order to qualify for SBA. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, it's not terribly difficult to qualify for SBA. Um, and you actually get uh, better multiples. for So for a seller... Your drawback in accepting an SBA loan is that it's kind of a hairy process, which is frustrating, and there's no guarantee that it's going to get approved. Hmm. Um, How long does it take, is, typically? I mean, it's probably it differs, but I mean, is it, are we talking a year? Are we talking six months, two years? So if you talk to an SBA lender, they'll tell you three to four weeks. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we'll push practice. us through in four weeks, and then right, a exactly. year later, you're like, what? Uh, three to four months is more typical from mm-hmm. our experience. I'm going through one right now. We're on month six. Um, wow. So, uh, there's and just, that, that just hit, you have to wait on that before you close on the deal. There's nothing you can do about it, uh, really. Yeah. I mean, uh, there are some things you can do. You can have some things prepared and make sure that your tax returns are ready. Make sure that you have your profit and loss statements ready. If you run multiple businesses through one entity, make sure you have tax returns for everything and they match. Uh, I'm sorry, profit and loss statements for uh, everything that they match your tax returns, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, be organized with, with SBA and you can push it through a bit faster. But you're still waiting on other people who are not motivated to get the deal done like you are. With a cash deal, can people get a, a discount on that? Like on the price typically? Or how does that work? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if, if I have two offers and one's a cash uh, deal and let's say it's even 10% or 15% less, uh, I'm going to recommend to my client that they take that cash deal. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, unless we're really low on price on both of them, but the cash deal is guaranteed. It's clean. It's fast. Uh, I mean, you can do a cash deal on a you know mid-sized six-figure business. You can do a cash deal in four weeks um, without too much difficulty. Hmm. So, what does the SBA require as a down payment typically? Good question. So SBA uh, will do depends on the size of the deal. They'll do either um, they'll either finance up to eighty percent of it mm-hmm. if it's I forget what the line is. It's, I think it's around five hundred thousand dollars. I can look this up later. Anything before like five hundred or below, they'll do for twenty percent. I believe it's five hundred thousand. Yeah, okay. or maybe it's between either five hundred or seven hundred thousand. I have an article on our site that, that actually yeah. goes over this. Uh, but they'll either do eighty percent or they'll do seventy five percent. So for the larger uh, loans, they'll do seven, up to seventy five percent. From the buyer, they require ten percent down. Now that obviously leaves either ten or fifteen uh, percent. So it gets free money. What happens? To that? <laughs> right, yeah. So that that's usually picked up by the seller. Um, it's very unfavorable rates for the oh, seller. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, SBA often likes to see the seller carry. It's not required in yeah. all situations, though. So. so they have some skin in the game type of thing for it to do well. Yeah, it, that the bank likes to see that. Um, I encourage buyers to be willing to put up the 20, 25% because, frankly, the terms that a seller has to take on their portion are terrible. Um, they can't receive any payments on their loans for the first two years. Yeah. So if I'm selling a business and I'm carrying. You want to lock up 10% or 15% of your business, yeah. Right. And I'm not, I'm not going to see any, I'm not going to see my first payment until month 25 uh, at, at best. And then it's on a six year amortization schedule. So it, it's just. Yeah, you don't recommend it to your to your sellers. It's a raw deal. Yeah. yeah, and and most sellers look at that like, yeah, right. I'm not going to get that money. <laughs> so, uh, if you're able to do the twenty twenty five percent down or keep that that uh, seller note down, you just have way more negotiating power, uh, and you're still getting paid back within the first year on your own personal uh, down payment. So, what are the interest rates now on the SBA loan? You know? They're going up. Um, the last rate that I saw was six point. Four or five, mm-hmm. so they are going up. What? Why? What are the reasons they reject people? Besides, I mean, obviously the time, like all those requirements are met. Why do they reject people? 
for that. Uh, it's year. more on the buyer, uh, more on the buyer side than the seller side. Yeah. Um, if the multiple is too rich, then they'll reject um, the reject the deal, or they'll only finance up to a portion of the deal. So um, let's say that you you have an offer for eight hundred thousand. They might do a valuation and say, "Well, we only think this is worth six fifty. It's not terribly common. Their multiples are generally friendlier than than what the uh, uh, brokering industry has. Right. Uh, on the other hand, buyers, if they think a buyer is overextended with loans, um, the last deal that I had where a buyer got rejected, uh, he got rejected because he had just completed two other deals within the last six months, hmm. and so the had SBA a lot of credit out. Uh, yeah, they just said you're you're over leveraged. We, we feel a little un, uh, uneasy about how much leverage you have out there right now. Yeah, uh, even though he's a good good buyer and has some financial backing outside of that, they they still rejected it. Yeah. so it's it's more on the buyer than anything else. Yeah. So those are the probably the typical right the SBA loan, the cash. What's some creative financing solutions that you've seen work out for people? Entrepreneurs, um, so, they probably well, get creative. You know, like if uh, yeah, maybe uh, SBA rollover for business. Yeah, rollover for business startups, I think, is one of the more creative uh, ways to finance a, a purchase. And a rollover for a business startup uses your uh, retirement account. Um, and um, it's a little bit of a convoluted process. But uh, what you do is you form a C-Corp. Okay. Uh, and then you uh, open up a self-directed IRA. And then that self-directed goes into your C-Corp. And now your C-Corp can make acquisitions with your retirement funds. There's tons of red tape involved. There are companies out there that specialize in this and can make sure that you pass with uh, flying colors um, with it. Um, but it's a nice way to tap into your, your retirement account uh, to be able to acquire a business. The problems with it are that you have to be a C-Corp. C-Corps are uh, not as tax friendly. Um, and uh, the other problem is that that the money has to stay in your retirement account, right? So if you're growing the value of your business, it's growing the value of your retirement account. You're mm. not necessarily going to be able to take that and buy a vacation home. Uh, without without having right. the, the early withdrawal penalty, it's just uh, a creative way that they can finance it through means that they already have, but they can't access right now, type of thing. But then they yeah, won't be able to access it now, anyways, when they grow their business. You you can though. I mean, what you could do is you could you could do a rollover for business startup. You could acquire the company. You could refund or grow your retirement account yeah. to basically refund whatever you use to acquire the company. Yeah. And you could take your self-directed IRA, divest in your own corporation, change out of that to an S corp. I mean, you can do a number of things like that to, to uh, use yeah. it as a temporary loan. Uh, I personally would hesitate to do it because I just don't want to mess with my retirement. Uh, but if you, I mean, if you have, you know, three, four, or five million dollars in retirement, and you want to stake four hundred thousand or five hundred thousand. Yeah. It's not that bad of a, yeah. a risk. Yeah, uh, that might be worth it. When does when have you seen a case actually of someone seller financing it, or a portion of it? A portion of it is it's How not uncommon. Is that? To see. Yeah, it's not uncommon at all. Um, I would say. What does that look like? Uh, yeah, I, I would say the majority of our deals, or yeah, the majority over over fifty percent uh, have some element of seller financing. Um, it's typically limited to anywhere from ten to thirty percent, depending on the business itself. Um, some businesses you will not be able to get seller financing because they're just good solid businesses and that that seller just won't take it um, but you're typically looking at notes of about two years at the at the top end um, it's really hard to convince a seller to do seller financing because there's just there's no guarantee on that right there's just no there's no note that you can really secure it against or no asset that you can see secure it against yeah. other than the business which they're trying to get rid of right why right? would they so, do it then uh, because they don't have too many other options right um, or if they get enough money at close where they feel decent about it. Um, wh what I tell sellers frequently is uh, the money you get at closing is guaranteed. The money you get in your first payment is uh, pretty much guaranteed. Second payment and so on and so forth, but your percentages go down the further you get out. Really? And so just kind of have... Do people default on it or, or why, why, what are the reasons? Honestly, not often. But okay. again, from the seller viewpoint... You just want can, your money. Right. And there's that, that re reality of there's no guarantee. How do I guarantee this? Uh, the best guarantee that you can have, um, I know escrow.com has uh, a domain holding service, so they'll put the domain in escrow. Uh, that's actually a pretty decent uh, uh, piece to use. And we use that with a lot of our seller notes yeah. um, to help secure the note. Uh, we don't see defaults at a high rate at all, though, surprisingly. Yeah. yeah. Mark, thank you so much for this, by the way. Everyone should check out quietlightbrokerage.com. I feel like I can go through all these listings and have you analyze them all day long. It would be fun. Um, it would be fun. What have we not talked about with Quiet Light Brokerage that you think would be important? 
Um, you, you know, I think the, the uh, biggest thing I like to let people know through any of these conversations and in conferences and anytime we get to talk to people is that uh, don't don't wait too long before talking to a broker about evaluation. And I know that sounds like a sales pitch, but I've already said, and I, I will stand by this uh, all day long. I don't care whether or not somebody sells their business. In fact, I think financially it makes sense to hang on to the business, but leave your options open. Uh, you and I actually already talked about this earlier. Uh, the things that we do see as far as why people are selling are life-changing situations. Um, they are you things just that never know. You just never know. Yeah. And you don't want me to look at your business and say you should wait two years if that doesn't really suit your plans. Um, doing evaluation now, having us just take a look at the business allows you to identify how much it's worth now, what it could be in the future, and maybe some things that you should be looking at and planning for in the future. Frankly, most of the advice that we give is good business advice anyways for just day-to-day -day business advice. Mm -hmm. um, and we love having those conversations. So my, my biggest advice to people is have a sense for this. Just have it in the back of your mind. We understand that you're running your business to grow it. Great. Keep that up. Uh, and and uh, just have this in the back of your mind so that your options are open if you need it. So, Mark, where should people go on your site? Uh, I guess they just go to quietlightbrokerage.com and then the upper right-hand corner. You actually, it's a free evaluation. A free evaluation. It's a free it's a free valuation. We're actually going to add a paid valuation. Oh, that's generous. I mean, it takes time and energy in your part to do those things. Well, we've had people that actually say they don't want a valuation because they don't want to use our time. So we're actually going to be adding a paid valuation here soon. Um, it's not going to be all that much different from what we give away for free, though. So um, really do you know? feel free to fill out the form. Let When, when uh, we reach out to you, let us know that I'm not interested in selling right now. That's yeah, fine. they don't want to do it because they don't want to waste your time. And right. they don't want to do it till they're serious, so they don't do it. But then probably right now they should do it just to get a sense of where they're at or something like that. Right. They end up wasting their time uh, down the road uh, eventually by, by not knowing the mechanics of what makes their business valuable early on. So, yeah. Any other posts that, pe that we should point people towards? Because I know you have a lot of informational posts on your site that I've read that are very helpful. Any ones in particular for the e-commerce folks to check out on, on your site? Sure. If you go to the resources section on our website, um, there's a couple of really good articles. One of the things that we talk about, I know it's not exciting, but knowing the difference between accrual and cash basis accounting. Um, if you're uh, going to Prosper Show, I'm going to use this as an example in my presentation of uh, how uh, we have saw, I think the valuation swing was over $200,000 based off wow. accounting methodology alone. That's crazy. It is. And it's one of those simple things that you can do to make sure that you're getting the most value out of your site. Uh, so take a look at that article. It's a very short article that explains the difference. Um, and then yeah. Joe Valley wrote a, a pretty nice comprehensive guide on how to sell an Amazon business. Um, so take a look at that. And then take a look at the blog where we're constantly adding new stuff uh, yeah, on the I'm blog that's very the, on point. Uh, yeah, the resources. And you can see the accrual versus cash accounting. And then you said Joe wrote one on selling an Amazon business. That would be helpful yep. for people for sure from, from Prosper Show. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mark, thank you for taking time away from the six kids, your business, everything else. Um, I want to be the first one to thank you. This has been an absolute pleasure. Well, thanks for having me on. Thanks for yeah. uh, giving me a break from my six kids. This has been fun. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mark. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out